what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so as you see on your screen here we're gonna talk about screen five again yes next thursday you will be getting to hear your first reactions on social media because the screen five social media embargo will lift next thursday at 9 p.m eastern followed by the following week when the film comes out on january 12th which is the date i'm expected to see it right now i hopefully i get to see it on the 6th but on january 12th that's when the full entire embargo will lift because that's when a lot of the promo screenings will happen for other members of the press along with fans to see the film early for free and you'll get to hear your full-fledged reviews on january 12th and that's when i, I think most of the content creators like myself because i know i'll have my review up after whatever screening i have uh, but it won't be up to look at until the 12th and everyone else like Killjoy Jake and all the other content creators beyond the mask, hopefully, and everyone else involved, Drum Dums even, they'll have their, their Scream 5 reviews up on the 12th or sometime around then. But going into this, I know this excites a lot of people for anyone who's excited to just hear what people are thinking about the film. Uh, I think what a lot the reason this excites me, this stuff excites me because it gives me a chance to see what are people saying is potentially problems with the film. Not specifically, because when a social embargo lifts, they're not going to go into all the specifics until the full embargo lifts. But maybe i'll get an insight as to what might not be working with the film in terms of just whatever it is that they pinpoint on what might be some pros and cons early on that maybe when i sit down and watch it i can evaluate and say you know i agree and i see where they were coming from and i do think that is something that takes away from the overall film's quality and the pros i'll pay attention to the pros that were pointed out and i'll say yep they were right on that too that was done well and that was something that keeps the film afloat but at the end of the day this is not something that you should sit down and just gauge as as to whether or not you will still like the film because like i said before i'm not gonna come on here during my review and just sugarcoat everything if the film has a lot of flaws if the film has a lot of flaws what i will try to do is just not be honing in on those flaws because there's nothing in in anything that i've seen that would indicate to me that this is going to have more cons than pros there's nothing in there in here from what i've seen from marketing and just the energy that I'm getting from them, of course, you're not going to come out and say, you know, we made a terrible film. <laughs> but so far, I'm not getting that vibe. I'm not getting a vibe where I'll have to come on here and Jeepers Creepers, Jeepers Creepers 3, a Scream movie. <laughs> it seems like we're going to have an adequate sequel, something that lives up to the legacy of what Wes Craven has left behind, something that pays respects to what he's done while also being its own unique thing, standing on its own and bridging into the future or successfully setting up a bridge to carry us into the future of this franchise with the Sam Carpenter, Tara Carpenter, and all the other survivors that we get along the way. Uh, so the Rotten Tomatoes score, of course, that's something a lot of people will be focused on. What is the Rotten Tomatoes score going to be? What is the Rotten Tomatoes score going to be? I'm going to predict that it's probably land in the 60s, if not the 70s, around there. If it lands anywhere beneath that, still, again, don't sit there and just hone in on that. Again, Scream 3 is the only one that's not fresh. Uh, the other important thing to, again, remember about Rotten Tomatoes that a lot of people don't understand is that Rotten Tomatoes could, in fact, be taking some people who intended to give a positive review, but because of how the rating system and ranking system or whatever system Rotten Tomatoes has, it only takes one little small smidgen for you to go against that, and they'll put yours as rotten. Or you could even have some people who have their ratings listed, their reviews listed as fresh when they were in try, they were more trying to trying to give it a negative review. But there was something that you kept doing that tipped off the the algorithm or whatever Ron Tomatoes has set up to put it as fresh. I just want that to be considered. The other side I think a lot of people go to is Metacritic. I think that's a better site to go to honestly, uh, because again, Ron Tomatoes. I know that for me. I, I know I have plenty of reviews that if I was a Rotten Tomatoes approved critic, they would just be, I could see them being most, I could see some of them just being rotten when I was being mostly positive. Like if I give a movie a six, Rotten Tomatoes, I could see them saying, oh, that's, that's, that's not, that's not a fresh rating. We're going to put that in our rotten category, but really I'm just saying, you know, that the movie was a six out of 10. And if we're talking about the school aspect, then yeah, that's a D, but let's not think about schools a six out of ten still is not me saying that's a bad film that's that's not a bad a bad ranking maybe you want it to be higher but a six out of ten depending on the film i'm talking about that's not me just writing the film off as a whole i'm still saying the film was most mostly good when i tend to give movies six out of tens anyway uh there are some instances where six out of ten is just me trying to be generous <laughs> i'll say 
but that's important to remember with Rotten Tomatoes. There's a lot of different variables that are not considered when they put out those, oh, this is fresh, this is rotten, this is fresh, this is rotten. The intent behind a lot of people's reviews might be getting misconstrued from how the Rotten, T Rotten Tomatoes ranking system is constructed. But I, I would think that this movie is going to land anywhere from 70, 60 ish. If I were to say what were some of the pros be that people highlight, definitely going to be the directing style of Radio Silence. Matt and Tyler going to highlight the score, going to praise the score. If anything, they're going to praise have ne how Nev Campbell and Courtney Cox are kind of just are feeding off each other. Maybe giving us some insight as to how well used the trio are, are, are used in this upcoming film. And of course, we're going to talk about how Melissa Barrera comes into a role as a new final girl for the Scream series to latch on to going forward. If she does a good job, they can talk about Tara Carpenter. Talk about, of course, the way the movie subverts your expectations, just like the Scream franchise is known to do. How it takes a lot of res how it takes a lot of stuff you've probably already seen before in the past but you're not seeing it done exactly the same way they're doing enough variations to make it go off to make it considered fresh it's not completely fresh but it's it's fresh enough i just think that's a lot of stuff that, that you'll see praise about and the way they commentate on the current climate of horror comment on fandom if because again we're going to hear about this toxic fandom stuff i would assume sometime next week when the social embargo lifts on thursday next week uh at 9 p.m after some critics see it and the cons at this point i mean i just I, I think some of the cons could just be maybe something some things being convoluted not feeling natural that's really it uh just some bad writing mishaps honestly just I, I feel like that's really the only only weakness that this movie would seem to have at this point just some bad writing here and there or some writing mishaps that could have been tweaked a bit better or some people that think you could have taken it a different route to make the narrative better I don't think they'll have a lot of things just painting it technically, but a lot of it could be about just some narrative decisions. That's what I could see being a lot of the cons, just a, just some narrative decisions. But the pros will definitely be in the technical stuff, acting, uh, how they convey certain things, etc. But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and never miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.